Hi guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be adding onto the herb series again since I haven't updated it for a while and today we will be painting parsley leaves. These are so fun and easy to paint. I think it's probably my favorite one so far so let's begin by drawing it out first like usual. So the parsley leaves are usually made in groups of three or the leaves are connected with three separate parts but for this painting I'm just going to stick with just separating them into three leaves to make it a bit easier and I'm going to draw out the leaves with long uneven curved lines along the edge making sure that they are mostly pointing upwards instead of uh, small curved lines following an even leaf shape. As I draw them out I like to think of little fingers pointing up instead of it going too far sideways like the one that I drew out previously then you can try to draw them out in groups of three and it's okay if some of the shapes are overlapping because it'll just give nice layers to the watercolors anyway. And just practice this in different angles because we will be playing with the branches a little bit. And if you're comfortable with drawing out the three separate leaves already for the parsley, then you can start putting it in a little composition or if you want to solely focus on the composition you can simplify the shapes by drawing out the three basic leaf shapes like I did in the beginning and figure out the curves and placement of the branches that way so you can draw it out quickly without overthinking about the detail of the curves and the leaves. I'm only going to paint small ones here quickly but you can make a larger version if it's a bit easier for you to see that way. You can be a little bit experimental with the placements and the composition. You can try to do things like overlapping leaves, crisscrossing branches, or include unplucked leaves, or any other thing that you can think of as extra elements too. So that's basically it for the drawing, there really isn't much to it. Let's get to the colors now. For the main color, I like to use permanent green. Then I always like to include the primary colors to get the green colors so I can adjust the temperature of the green. And for the primary colors, I added Orlin yellow and Prussian blue in the palette. And to mute the colors, I'm also going to use sepia and also burnt sienna for a warmer muted green. Firstly, I'm going to show you the difference if you mix up the permanent green with the burnt sienna versus if you were to mix it with sepia. So firstly, when I mix the burnt sienna into the permanent green, because the brown itself is fairly bright, when I add a touch of it to the permanent green, it only mutes it slightly and gives the permanent green a slight warmth. Of course, this would change if you were to add different ratios to it. And you can also try this on your paper if you're still new to watercolors and you still want to find out more about color mixing. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of the sepia into the permanent green this time and as you can see because the brown itself is darker and more dull and it's probably closer to a black, the green becomes very dark and murky compared to the warm green that we had before with the burnt sienna. Now I'm going to mix the permanent green with Prussian blue and as you can see the green becomes much richer and cooler in temperature. It's dark but it's vibrant compared to the dark green that we created before with the sepia. Now I'm going to compare it with the permanent green mixed with oral and yellow and here the green becomes warmer just like the first one with the burnt sienna but because the yellow is pure and does not have any reddish or orange tone like say permanent yellow deep would have, the warm green still looks very vibrant. Those are the colors that you can create by adding those individual colors to the permanent green but you can also add the green mixtures together and let's just go over them quickly here so let's mix the first color with burnt sienna and the oral and yellow green together and as you can see the green becomes even more warm and yellow but now it's muted because of the addition of burnt sienna. If I mix in the Prussian blue mix with the burnt sienna mix and the color becomes 
a rich dark green, but now it's also slightly muted from the burnt sienna. Now let's mix the greens again, but this time we're going to mix the yellow green with the sepia mix. And now you can see that even though the sepia mutes the color, the orillin yellow helps brighten the green so it doesn't look as muted as the second color mix that we put down with only the burnt sienna. And if I were to add the Prussian blue into the sepia mix, the dark green is cooler compared to the dark blue green that we mix with the burnt sienna only. You can swatch and try to mix different ratios to further understand how to mix colors if you're a true beginner, but I'm just going to go ahead and paint the parsley. Now with all the colors that we swatched roughly earlier, we're going to use all the different color mixtures alternatively as we paint small sections so the painting doesn't look too flat. I like to start painting from the main stem. I find that this gives a good indication for the rest of the painting so you can build off the rest of the composition from there. I also like to use a fairly thin consistency for the stem just so I can add on more colors as I paint later on so it's not only one color but I can still play with the transitions between the different greens. To paint the leaves I like to use the tip of my brush and I'm using fairly thin brush strokes to pull the paint to the stem area and I repeat this motion until I get the shape of the leaf that I want and making sure that the tips and the sides of the leaves are uneven. I want to make my main green color quite light so I can use the wet on wet technique to incorporate other colors into it while it's still wet. This way I can add a touch of the other colors or the different greens in a small spot of the leaf and this will bring a bit more interest to the painting rather than just painting something with a flat color which can look a little bit boring after a while. If you noticed, I also dried off the leaf with a hair dryer. This depends on what you want your painting to look like. I personally want my leaf to overlap and I want to see the slight layers from the leaves being painted on top of each other rather than the paint combining with each other. So if you want the paint to combine and the leaves to sort of distribute with each other, don't dry it but if you would like to see a distinct overlapping of the leaves, then dry the area which will touch to create the layers. I like to start by painting the middle leaf first and that way I just have to dry it once and I can start building on the leaves on either side of the middle leaf. After painting the leaves, I also like to add a slightly darker color or a different tone of green for the stem, but I want to add the stem preferably while the leaf is still wet, so the leaf and the stem looks like it's connected to each other and I'm just going to paint the stem little by little on top of the thin consistency green that I painted initially. You can alternate the colors of the leaves as you paint individual ones too. I like to do that subtly. You probably noticed that the leaves that I painted earlier are just slightly different to one another because one might have a little bit more Prussian blue or one might have the oral and yellow and permanent green mix with burnt sienna and so on. In certain parts of the leaf, sometimes I also like to add dots of the burnt sienna to a small part of the leaf, giving the leaf a little bit of imperfection. But don't go too overboard with this or else your parsley might look like it's wilting. As I'm painting the leaves, I'm also painting it with light brush strokes so I can control my brush and leave some white areas of the leaves so the leaves look nice and light. You don't have to do this for every single one but including some white spaces in some areas can make the parsley look more delicate and light. For the next leaf, I'm going to paint it really close to the one I painted before and I'm just going to let it overlap each other if it needs be. By just changing up the distance of the leaves, your composition will look more natural compared to if you were to place everything at the same distance apart or uniformly. I'm also going to change up the length of the branches. For this one, I'm going to make a very long branch compared to the ones that I've painted earlier and this will add to the unevenness of the composition. So everything from here on is basically the same. I'm just going to paint it the same way by alternating the colors, drying the middle leaf if I want to create separate layers, and also adding a touch of imperfection to some of the leaves. So I'm just going to slightly speed this up and I'll get back to you once I'm close to finishing this painting.
I also decided to finish off the painting with some loose leaves and I just painted these the same way as I painted the other leaves and that's to paint the main leaf in the middle first and then drying it off with a hair dryer and once it's dry I continue with the leaves on either side of it. You can do as many of these as you want but I'm just going to do a few so it doesn't take away from the focal point or the whole painting itself and it just serves as an extra element to the painting. I'm just going to finish off the painting with one more leaf and this one is imperfect because instead of three it only has two and I'm just going to leave it like this. So that's basically it for this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is probably my favorite one so far that I've painted in the Herb series. It's so much fun to paint even though it's repetitive but I love seeing all the different tones of greens coming together. So if you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you learned something new from this video and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!